Hi, YouTubers and wet shavers everywhere. It's SparkWithGeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? I've got something brand new, courtesy of viewer Jamie Horn. Jamie, thank you very, very much. Hang on one minute. That is really, really good. I really, really like this one a lot. Uh, this is Bones Coffee Shark Bite. Oh my gosh, is this great. Uh, on the product page, it says, take a bite out of your morning with our delicious Shark Bite Coffee. Our 100% Arabica beans infused with spiced buttered rum flavor and roasted to a medium perfection. You're going to need a bigger mug. Absolutely correct. This is marvelous. The first sip of this before cameras roll, because I, I was really excited to try it, was just fantastic. I absolutely love Shark Bite from Bones Coffee. Absolutely terrific, terrific, terrific coffee. And I love the artwork on the packaging here. <laughs> All the way around. Really, really terrific. Very, very unique. Uh, you know, a lot of fun and really it just kind of puts you in a good mood to drink a cup of coffee. This artwork does. Absolutely fantastic. And um, coffee mug I'm using, uh, the coffee mug I'm using this morning is my Camden's Choice uh, coffee mug, courtesy of your Alex Lopez. Alex, thank you very, very much. Uh, now, why am I using the Camden's Choice uh, Captain's uh, coffee mug? Well, here's the way I reasoned it, okay? Uh, a captain. What captain do I know? Captain Kirk, right? And uh, Captain Kirk had a medical officer. Who was that? Dr. McCoy. And what was Dr. McCoy's uh, nickname? Uh, that's right. Bones. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. That's 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 the way I figured it out. Yeah, I think it's I think it works. Absolutely. So I've got a uh, the Bones coffee here and um, uh, a coffee mug related to uh Bones, Dr. McCoy. And also, the spiced rum is kind of a nautical kind of a thing, isn't it? Yo-ho-ho, -ho, that sort of thing. Absolutely fantastic. Hey, one more. That is really, really, really terrific. Well, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. Hey, it's a federal holiday for everyone here in the United States. It's Juneteenth. And uh, Juneteenth uh, is uh, celebrated on uh, June 19th. And as they write on Wikipedia, Juneteenth, is a federal holiday in the United States commemorating the emancipation of enslaved African Americans. Deriving its name from combining June and 19th, it is celebrated on the anniversary of the order issued by Major General Gordon Granger on June 19, 1865, proclaiming freedom for slaves in Texas. Now, I'll link to the Wikipedia article where you can read more about the uh, our federal holiday today, Juneteenth. So a lot of you have the day off this morning. It's a federal holiday, so I hope you're kicking back and enjoying a cup of coffee with me and uh, enjoying uh, the Monday morning mailbag in a very leisurely fashion. That's absolutely wonderful. And uh, you know what? You know it's summer when you look up and you see this in a tree. Yeah, <laughs> check out this snake. This snake... Uh, was about six or seven feet long. My gosh, uh, I just happened to see this on my uh, <laughs> on my travels about a week or so ago, and it is. I mean, it was just alarming. Someone was saying, "Hey, you want to see something? Check, look up in that tree there." And I just, I couldn't believe the size of this snake. My God, my gosh. And I, you know what? That's the first time I've ever seen a snake in a tree, to be perfectly honest with you. And I have no idea what kind of snake this is. So if you know anything about snakes, please tell us, what kind of snake is this? And why is it in a tree? <laughs> That's what I would like to know, because usually when I see snakes, they're on the ground or they're in tall grass or underneath some uh, shrubbery, that sort of thing. But I've never seen a snake in, uh, in a tree like that before. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I was like amazed. And uh, my uh, camera on my phone did an absolutely uh, fantastic, fantastic job of zooming in and capturing all the action. So that was really kind of neat. So again, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. Uh, as we like to say in the show, a good hot coffee, a trusty mug. Let the caffeine go to work, gentlemen. And again, it's a federal holiday, Juneteenth. But if for some reason you find yourself on your way to work, hey, if you're taking me along on your morning commute, thanks very much for the lift. I really, really do appreciate it. 
Got a great show uh, for you this morning. Got a great shaving tip. We're going to have a uh, Maggard Meetup mention, uh, another artisan shave soap uh, maker that uh, I forgot to mention in the original highlight reel of the Maggard Meetup. Uh, so we're going to be looking at that. Got an update to the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway. Got some great refill comments. Got some new wet shaving gear that is absolutely fantastic. Uh, we're going to revisit a uh, razor from Timeless Razor. Uh, absolutely fantastic, the TI Slim. And also a new razor from Timeless Razor that they very, very kindly sent along to the channel for review. Also, we've got something brand new from the Wet Shaving Store. Probably going to be released June uh, end of June, beginning of July, something like that. Also, something new from Phoenix Shaving. Well, new, it's back. Something from Phoenix Shaving, we'll get to that. A lot of other stuff. A great review from Mark Bagwell. Also, another review from uh, viewer uh, Robert Ross. Uh, new shaving brush drop. Uh, a lot of great, great stuff. So let's kick the show off like we do every week with a viewer morning shaving tip. Well, this morning's shaving tip comes from viewer Wally Pankowski. And Wally writes, Hi, Mark. Your 3MB has become a regular part of my Monday morning routine. Well, thanks very much for mentioning that, Wally. I really do appreciate it. Here's a possible tip for pre-shaving. I started using Nivea Sensitive Face Wash. The slickness was amazing. So I try to use it as a pre-shave, and it works wonderfully. Just thought I would pass it on. Be safe, Wally. Hey, Wally, thanks very, very much for that. I know a lot of viewers out there like to look for alternative pre-shave products. This one is a really nice suggestion because we had this in the previous Monday Morning Mailbag last week, I believe it was, where another viewer talked about using Cremo body wash as a pre-shave and it worked very, very well. So this is kind of in that category. So folks, if you're looking for an alternative pre-shave product, check out Nivea Sensitive Face Wash. And as Wally says here, the slickness was amazing. So again, Nivea Sensitive Face Wash uh, as a pre-shave. Hey, Wally, thanks very, very much for that. Really do appreciate it. And to say thank you for you and only you, an original signed George Sketch. So please email me your snail mail address to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com, and I will send this to you post haste. And if you out there would like an original signed George sketch, just send me a shaving tip. Send that shaving tip to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com. And if I use it here on the morning shaving tip on the Monday morning mailbag, you too will receive an original signed George sketch. So Wally, thanks very, very much for a great shaving tip. Really do appreciate it. Well, we have an extra shaving tip this morning. It comes from viewer Bob LaRoe, and he writes, I have started using an exfoliating brush with pre-shave soap, and I think it's the best way to get ready for a shave. Sure, there's not much to it. I just rub the pre-shave soap bar on the top, then scrub my face. I think it helps. I was using a hot, wet washcloth, but I think this is better. Hey, Bob, thanks very, very much. Another great shaving tip regarding a pre-shave uh, routine. And thanks very, very much for passing this along. So folks, you know what? Give this a try, an exfoliating brush with a little bit of pre-shave soap on there. I guess that will help uh, lift the whisker a little bit and maybe... Uh, also kind of prep the skin a little more by getting rid of getting getting rid of the excess oil and grease a little more efficiently perhaps absolutely fantastic fantastic pre-shave shaving tip thanks again for uh, passing along bob really do appreciate it well we have some shave den visits this morning and we're going to kick things off with something from viewer ashish ahuja and ashish writes dear mark I hope this email finds you in great spirits. I'm a huge fan of your show and podcast and want to start by expressing my gratitude for the fantastic content you consistently deliver. Ashish, thank you very, very much, but it's all due to the viewers out there. The viewers make this show. They supply the lion's share of content. And as I, as I always say, uh, without you, the viewer, this microphone would be silent. 
Uh, but thank you very much. Thank you very much for the kind words, but it's all due to the viewer. Uh, he continues here. It's always a highlight of my week, providing both relaxation and entertainment. Again, great to hear, Ashish. Today, I wanted to share something with you that I believe will pique your interest. I have an extensive shave brush collection that I've been curating over the years. These brushes come in a variety of styles, materials, and craftsmanship, making each one unique in its own way. I find joy in the ritual of using them and appreciate the artistry that goes into their creation. Now, what truly enhances the experience is the creative storage solution we've implemented using a dressing mirror. I came up with the idea of utilizing the dressing mirror to keep my shave brushes neatly organized and within easy reach. We attach discrete hooks and compartments behind the mirror, effectively turning it into an elegant display and storage unit. It's not only functional, but also adds a touch of sophistication to our bathroom decor. I thought you might appreciate the concept, given your appreciation for innovative and visually appealing solutions. If you'd like, I can share some photos with you to give you a better idea of how the dressing mirror and shave brush collection come together harmoniously. Once again, thank you for the exceptional content you produce. Your show and podcast are a constant source of inspiration and relaxation for me. Keep up the fantastic work. Wishing you a wonderful day ahead. Regards, Ashish. Ashish, thank you so much for the kind words and that photo of your storage unit there, uh, the dressing mirror storage unit uh, with your brush collection. Looks absolutely fantastic. Now, I wrote Ashish back and I said, yeah, I'd love to have some more photos, but it would really be neat if you could send a video. And then that way we can actually see this working. And Ashish did send a video. And here he is giving us a tour of this, this mirror storage unit that uh, he assembled and is using in his shave den to store all of his wonderful shaving brushes. Uh, check it out. Take it away, Ashish. Hi, Mark. How are you? Well, this is the dressing table which I was talking about. It has two drawers here where my wife keeps her stuff. This is where she gets ready. And this is what I'm talking about. I'm just going to open it. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I did. I have some basic razors over here, aftershaves, colognes. And I'm going, to just, I'm going to just give you a mini tour about the brush collection that I have. Those are the Omegas the board brush this is the smog silver tip badger this one is a yaki another one and this one i got it from west coast shaving because i really like the knot and i have another one from west coast shaving it's exactly the same knot from west coast shaving i have all three colors i believe the blue the black and i believe i have the red one as well yeah here's the one anyway so another one from yaki that's from zenith that's paa that's from West Coast Shaving as well. That's one is a silver tip badger from uh, Yaki. Another one from Yaki. That's an Indian brand called Rubab. A simple knot which I use for traveling mostly. That's another board from Smog. That's a Yaki. That's that's an Indian brand called Pink Wolf. They make excellent brushes. So that's a board knot. I have all three colors. So that's one which is black. I have one which is maroon with the same knot. This is Yaki again. So they make all board, board knots. So here's the black. Here's the maroon. Here's the blue. And this one I got it from Whip Dog. This is again silver tip with a little bit of backbone because this is drilled about 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters, no, 10, 10 millimeters, I believe, inside. Uh, so it gives a bit of backbone that I'm yet not able to break in that one is a board knot from omega and here we go that's a horse hairbrush from an indian brand i got it locally here that's another one from yaki that's a synthetic brush i locally procured that's an omega bore that's an indian brand uh, with a very good knot and that's a fine badger of art of shaving that's my uncle gifted me once he knew about my hobby I actually i'm a daily shaver so i just use the basic gear I just I don't use aggressive razors I just use mild razors so that's the red one that's the Merca 34C that's an Indian brand making double-edged safety razor that's in butterfly but very mild 
that's King C Gillette that's the R89 I believe from Mula that's another open comb but uh, no I'm so sorry this is the TTO but it's a bit aggressive that's another Indian brand and that's the Merca 34C in uh, silver that's my little brassuka here <laughs> I have another one in the uh, in my in my where I shave in the bathroom. That's Brute. That's Gillette again. I really like this aftershave. So I have Floyd, mentholated, and the regular one. And another razor here. I th uh, this one I use for traveling a lot. These are the aftershaves. That's from Marks and Spencer. <clears throat> I have Old Spice, and I have another one from Marks and Spencer. So here's the little mini tour of my shave den well here we go thank you so much for considering my video and i wish you all the best thank you bye bye that is absolutely fantastic so very very creative and also inspirational to a lot of viewers out there i know a lot of wet shavers are going to be inspired to do something similar in their shaving den really really wonderful ashish Thank you so much for taking the time to shoot that video and share it with all the viewers and fellow wet shavers out there. Really, really do appreciate it. And he wraps up here by saying, I'm from Mumbai, India. We do have regular shave meetups here. This hobby isn't that big as in the U.S., but it's gaining momentum. That's absolutely great to hear. Ashish, thanks again for sharing your shave den and this mirror storage cabinet with all the viewers and fellow wet shavers out there. Really, really do appreciate it. Uh, Matt Armstead checked in and he wrote, Hi Mark, hope all is well with you. This weekend I went back to London to continue my shaving store adventure. I visited George F. Trumper. Well, it's G-O-F Trumper. I think it's short for George. Someone out there, correct me if I'm wrong. Whenever I see G-E-O, I always say George. So I don't know if, if the correct pronunciation is G-O-F Trumper or George F. Trumper. Please let me know in the comments below. I, I read it and I know what it is, but I'm not sure about how folks pronounce it. But I'm going to go with George F. Trumper, uh, Taylor of Old Bond Street, again. Couldn't resist not going into the store. And Truefit and Hill, really, really great stores. And again, the customer service was excellent. Actually, after I bought some shaving cream, I was outside George F. Trumper store taking some photos. And the person who attended to me in the store saw me taking the photos and came out and gave me some aftershave samples to go with my shaving soap. The George F. Tr the, the George F. Trumper lime scent. Uh, that's really great customer service. What a nice gentleman. I've once again attached some photos of the stores. I was also able to take a couple of photos inside True Fit and Hill, but only off the front entrance because it is a barbershop as well. I was not permitted to take any pictures of the barbershop area because of the clients. Take care, Mark. Yeah, I think I've heard that too. They, they may have some uh, very well-known clients there and they don't want, for whatever reason, they don't want their photo taken. I, I guess that's what I've heard. I think Mark Bagwell may have mentioned that to me in passing. Uh, but uh, yeah, really, really neat. Matt is from, uh, well, Matt's from England uh, across the pond and uh, visiting London again to uh, give us an update on his adventures uh, in shaving shops and uh, the barber shops there in London. Uh, True Fit and Hill, uh, Taylor of Old Bond Street, and George F. Trumper. Again, folks, <laughs> let me know if I got that right or not. Uh, Bill Murphy checked in and he wrote, Hi, Mark. Had a nice shave this morning with my new revamped Fat Boy Razor from Razor Emporium. It's the Prospector Edition, which is finished in rhodium and 24 karat gold. It is gorgeous. The razor I got is an E4, which is a 1959 fourth quarter manufacture date. The first shave I had was kind of rough on one side of the razor, and I had to finish with another razor. Today, I decided to try a different blade, a Gillette Platinum, and got a nice, comfortable shave. That was the first time I had I have had a blade from Wilkinson. Uh, I now know why shavers give so much praise to this razor. I got this razor when the Emporium had a discount going on at $40 off the $199 price. And uh, here's what uh, it says on the website. And again, Bill very, very kindly sent this along. So this is from the website regarding this 
razor. For a limited time only, the Gillette Fat Boy Adjustable Razor Prospector Edition. The Prospector Edition celebrates our home state of Arizona's history as a great mining resource of precious metals and the men who called themselves prospectors, sustained by boundless faith and never quenched hope. The Fat Boy is the original and ultimate in masculine shaving comfort, a design so classic it has been replicated by all the modern razors we love today. Made in the USA at the height of the golden age of manufacturing, this razor's full brass construction has been lovingly and expertly revamped by our team of razor specialists. This vintage razor arrives 100% shave ready with exquisite new rhodium and 24 karat gold plating. Uh, wow, that is absolutely beautiful. He also provided a link. I will provide the link below if you're interested in this, folks. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous razor, Bill. Absolutely wonderful. Hey, enjoy that razor. That is absolutely a keeper and one that I think your heirs are going to fight over. Absolutely. And that wraps up this week's Shave Den Visits. My thanks to everyone who contributed. This was absolutely wonderful. What a treat. Thanks so much, gentlemen. We'll do it again next week. Well, here's your weekly podcast reminder that the Monday Morning Mailbag is available as a podcast. Simply go up to your favorite streaming service and search for Monday Morning Mailbag and more Monday Morning Mailbag and more, and the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast should come right up. It's available on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Google Podcasts, as well as our other podcast called Second Cup. So again, search for Monday Morning Mailbag and more on your favorite streaming service, and the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast will come right up, as well as Second Cup, our other podcast that we do here. Uh, and again, both are available on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Google Podcasts. Well, this week we have another Maggard Meetup mention. Uh, we're going to visit with a uh, particular artist and soap maker that I accidentally omitted from the highlight reel after I came back from the Maggard Meetup put together uh, all the video and photos that I had uh, shot while at the Maggard meetup and put it into a highlight reel and included that in the Monday morning mailbag. And unfortunately, in putting that together, I did omit uh, a few artisans out there and we're kind of going back and, and giving them some time in this section of the show. And last week we had a visit with a couple of artisans that uh, didn't make the highlight reel. And this week we have another one called Southern Witchcrafts. Now, uh, this is because uh, viewer Greg P reminded me of this artisan and wrote the following. Uh, one of these days, Mark, I would love to PayPal you the funds to purchase some Southern Witchcraft soap as a gift. Their sense can be challenging, which is why it's best that you choose versus me doing it for you. Regardless, their vegan base is one of the best on the market and is also wonderful for the skin. Uh, he adds here, I've never tried Ariana and Evans myself, but you have convinced me I should. Thanks as always. Hey, that's great to hear, Greg. Let us know how you like Ariana and Evans. But yes, I did meet with the artisan soap maker from uh, Southern Witchcraft. She was very, very helpful and very, very informative and gave me a lot of great information about the vegan soap base. And I did come away with some uh, samples. Uh, here is Dryantia right here. Okay, and uh, here's another one called uh, uh, Deserology. This is the barbershop scent. You can see that little barbershop pole right there. This is marvelous. This is an absolutely, this is a marvelous, marvelous barbershop scent. I'm looking forward to using this one. This is probably the, this is probably the one I'm going to use uh, first. Uh, that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, this is, this is an interesting one. Now it's very, very, the, the, the printing on this is very, very small. And the artwork is rather tight on the label, but I don't know if you can see it, but it's called Boonana. <laughs> can you get that? Boonana? All right. I'll just may I'm gonna try and zoom in on that so you can see it. Boonana. All right. Yeah. And uh, this scent. Yeah, very, very different. Very, very different. And I and I can't really quite put my finger on it because 
it's it's in this sample tub. I think once I get it into a bowl and let it bloom and kind of, you know, let it bloom and, and, and really let the scent kind of permeate the shave down anything, I'll have a better idea of it. Uh, also, this is a um, autumn ash right there. That looks really, really good. And this this scent is, yeah, this has an organic kind of earthy kind of a scent. This one's a little more prominent than the Bunana, that's for sure. Um, and, uh, oh yeah, I got, oh, here, I got another one of Dacerology, which was barbershop, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm like, why do I have two of these? Yeah, now I remember it's got that barber, it's the barber pole, the barbershop uh, scent. Uh, yeah, that's why uh, I got two of them because of the barbershop scent. Yeah, but they were really, really very, very nice. And uh, the artisan was very, very informative. And we had a great discussion about the vegan base and uh, the kind of uh, care and um, thought that goes into creating uh, her shave soaps, that sort of thing. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, taking this one for a, a test drive and, and using this and putting this into a lathering bowl and whipping up a great lather. And I guess, and again, Dacerology, their barbershop scent, is the one I'm going to go with first. Absolutely fantastic. And I think maybe I'm also going to try Boonana. Well, I'm going to try them all. <laughs> but I think I'm going to hold Autumn Ash for uh, the fall. I think that's what I'm going to do because this really has a nice uh, autumnal vibe to it. So, yeah, that's uh, that's great. So, yeah. So, Greg, thanks very, very much for uh, reminding me about Southern Witchcrafts. I did see them at the Maggard Meetup, and I had a great conversation with the artisan so, yeah, really, really looking forward to trying it out. So thanks very much for the reminder and uh, reminding me to share it with all the viewers out there. So, folks, Southern Witchcrafts Shave Soaps. We'll, uh, we'll get a link uh, to their website so you can check them out uh, further. Thanks again, Greg. Really, really do appreciate it. Well, I wanted to give you an update this morning on the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway. As you know, the channel has over 9,500 subscribers now. And when we reach 10,000 subscribers, we're doing a giveaway. And the giveaway is being made possible by the very generous donations and contributions of viewers out there. Again, thank you all very, very much. This week, I want to highlight another donation to the prize package giveaway, again, from viewer Beth Jones. Beth, thank you very, very much. Uh, let me just recap what she has already sent along. She has already sent along. This was already featured already. Seaforth Sea Ice Lime Shave Soap right there. And uh, 100 Gillette Platinum Razor Blades, the Swedes. Uh, razor blades, boy, these are terrific from Bull Goose Shaving. Thank you very, very much, Beth. And also a Starry Night Lathering Bowl that's uh, being handmade as we speak. It should be arriving any day now. And when we get that, we'll also show that to you uh, here on the Monday Morning Mailbag when we talk about the uh, 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway update. We'll show that again. We'll show that for the first time, but we've talked about it in the past. Absolutely Gorgeous, gorgeous lathering bowl. Thank you very, very much, Beth. And of course, uh, with uh, with the uh, some of these articles that uh, <laughs> that came, you also get a uh, a uh, freshener right there, and also um, some uh, Jelly Belly uh, candies. These came with uh, a couple of the items, I guess, as little giveaways. Uh, so uh, we'll send <laughs> that'll also be included as well. She sent along two other shave soaps for the prize package giveaway. Uh, first up from Phoenix Shaving, Speakeasy. Now Beth mentioned this in the comment section of a, I believe, a previous Monday morning mailbag. Talked about what a wonderful scent this is. It is an absolutely fantastic, fantastic scent. Check out the scent profile: rose, sage, bergamot, citrus, wood, and Amber, and as uh, Phoenix Shaving writes on their product page, Speakeasy, a classic cologne scent that is reminiscent of a bygone era. This scent does not smell like any kind of libation or spirit, but rather a mood. Think the Great Gatsby. Yeah, and again, check out that artwork right there. Isn't that absolutely fantastic? Yeah, so I'll just, I won't, 
Oh, yes, yeah, so that's really, really nice. It's brand new puck. I'm not going to stick my face in there <laughs> because we're giving it away, but it is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful scent. So thanks to uh, Beth Jones for uh, sending along from Phoenix Shaving Speakeasy. Absolutely fantastic scent. She also sent along uh, another shave soap, uh, this one from Spearhead. This is Seaforth Black Watch. How about that? Absolutely fantastic. And uh, as they uh, write, as the folks at Spearhead write uh, regarding Black Watch, Black Watch is a special chapter in the Seaforth story. Seaforth was a drugstore staple by the 1950s, but it wasn't perceived as a luxury product by high end retailers. The solution was Black Watch, a distinguished scent with its own image, branding, and product line. Our reimagination takes the sophistication of Black Watch and refines it for modern wear, day or night. Wow, absolutely. Here are the scent notes. Uh, scent notes include bergamot, jasmine, plum, leather, oak moss, incense, and sandalwood. Wow, absolutely fantastic. So there it is from Spearhead, uh, Seaforth Black Watch, and of course, from Phoenix Shaving Speakeasy. Uh, two additional shave soaps that uh, Beth Jones very, very kindly sent along to the uh, 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway pool. Beth, thank you very, very much. And again, you know what? Before we get out of here, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna crack that open. Brand new, brand new tub. Oh yeah, that is a, that is a marvelous, marvelous scent. And I absolutely love uh, those uh, shave soap scents that are great for an evening out. So this one absolutely fits this category. But they say day or night, but I'm sure it's just going to just sing if you wear it for an evening out. So thanks again to Beth Jones for uh, adding two more wonderful shave soaps to uh, what she has already donated to the 10,000 10, subscriber prize package uh, giveaway pool. Thank you very, very much, uh, Beth. And again, uh, I want to extend my sincere and my sincere thanks and heartfelt appreciation to the following uh, viewers out there: Jimmy V Photography, Beth Jones, Tyler Fike, Charles Price, Alex Lopez, Scott Martin, James Sefton, George Haven, Jimmy Day, Bill Murphy, Mark Bagwell, and all the folks at Pretech for their very, very generous contributions to the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway pool. It is just ramping up uh, to be an absolutely spectacular, spectacular giveaway. And uh, these folks that I have mentioned, again, Jimmy V, Jimmy V Photography, Beth Jones, Tyler Fike, Charles Price, Alex Lopez, Scott Martin, James Sefton, George Haven, Jimmy Day, Bill Murphy, Mark Bagwell, and all the folks at Pretech, all the folks at Pretech, they have made it all possible. Thank you all very, very much. And again, my sincere thanks to all the viewers out there for commenting, for sharing, for viewing, for turning, for tuning in, and uh, for being part of the audience, and for your very, very kind words, messages, and emails. Thank you all very, very much. Well, what do you know? Coffee's getting low that time of the show. Let's go back for a refill. Well, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. I hope you went back for a refill. I sure did. Uh, hey, get a look at our summer snake. <laughs> we're, we're kicking summer off. Summer starts like, what, on the 21st this week here uh, in uh, the northern hemisphere of uh, the world. Uh, and uh, here's, a, here's a snake. And uh, if you know what kind of snake this is and why he's in a tree, please let us know in the comments below. So... I, I'm jokingly saying you can always tell summer's kicking off when you see a snake in a tree. So <laughs> we've got some uh, great, great refill comments this morning. You know what? Before we get to that, I got to mention again, uh, Bones Coffee, uh, sh <laughs> Shark Bite. This is, I was going to say Snake Bite. <laughs> no, that's a different artisan out there. I think Snake Bite was uh, fine, fine accoutrements, right? Now this is Shark Bite. Coffee from the folks at uh, Bones Coffee. Really, really terrific and uh, really enjoy it. And thanks again to uh, viewer Jamie Horn. Really, really like the butter rum 
uh, flavor of it. It's absolutely fantastic. Really, really very, very good. And again, Captain's Choice mug. Thanks to Alex Lopez uh, and uh, Bones. Yeah, Captain's Choice, Star Trek, Kirk. Bones, yeah, okay. <laughs> Quick rundown from uh, the start of the show. Well, we've got some really, really great comments in Refill this morning. Let's kick it off with something from uh, viewer D.E. Razor Shading, who wrote, Awesome that you got one of those brushes. Pretty creative that you can use pretty much any knot you want. You're the first I've seen use one. This is in regards to the... Um, Timeless adjustable shave brush handle. This thing is absolutely a work of genius. It's fantastic. You can use any shave knot in this brush handle from 20 millimeters all the way up to 28 millimeter and uh, no glue at all. All you have to do is get one of these rubber gaskets here. It comes with all these rubber gaskets and then you just take your shave knot. And I have used uh, a variety of shave knots in it uh, already. I've been using it all week. Here's a 26 millimeter uh, synthetic shave knot uh, that uh, the AP Shave Company G5C 26 millimeter uh, synthetic shave knot. Uh, the folks at Timeless Razor very, very kindly sent this along, as well as this 22 millimeter golden nib SP uh, knot. And uh, you can just swap these out in an instant. It absolutely is a fantastic, fantastic system. And I've also used the um, the Maggard uh, 26 uh, millimeter super high density uh, shave knot, uh, this one right here, uh, that uh, that popped in no problem at all. And uh, the 24 millimeter super high density knot, that one popped in really, really well too. And as uh, as Doug and Jeremiah from Timer's Razor were telling me when, when I bought this at Maggard Meetup, uh, they were saying that, uh, for instance, if the 26 millimeter knot, uh, if the base... Uh, is a little bit larger than 26 millimeters. All you have to do is go to the 27 millimeter gasket that they have, and that'll 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 work. So you can kind of, you know, if it's if it's a little too tight or or, or a little too loose, however, you can go a millimeter up or a millimeter down. You're going to get a really really good fit. And I have found that to be true with uh, this particular 26 millimeter knot. I went to the 27 millimeter base right here, and it was just perfect. So yeah, I am really enjoying this. I've been using this all week for all my shaves and it's been absolutely splendid. I really like this brush a lot. So we've talked about smaller soap containers. Um, I believe it's Denton Magic is offering two and a half ounce uh, soap containers. And a lot of viewers are saying, hey, that's a really great space saving idea. So here's another great space saving idea right here. You buy one handle and many knots and you're saving some space. So, uh, you know, I've got what I got one, two, I got one, two, three, four brush knots here, one handle, and I can swap them out in an instant. It's absolutely amazing how quickly this swaps out a, a brush knot. And uh, all you got to do is just uh, tighten that down and it's watertight. There's an O-ring right here. And it's watertight, it's the interior of it stays dry, and uh, you can swap out any size knot from 20 millimeters to 28 millimeters. Yeah, it really is a terrific, terrific brush. I like using this a lot. And it also has a nice shape and feels great in the hand. This is 6061 aluminum, as I recall, and it's beautifully anodized in a beautiful blue color as well. So yeah, check that out. Timeless Razor, their adjustable shave brush handle. Absolutely fantastic. So DE Razor. Uh, shaving, DE Razor Shaving. Thanks for mentioning that again. Really do appreciate it. Viewer Keith Osmond wrote, Citrus Scents. I have three lime soaps and love all three, plus a bergamot and a couple of grapefruit forward citrus blends, which I also really like. HC&C's Citrus Bomb really is da bomb. So far, though, the two orange-scented soaps I have, First Canadian Shave Satsumo and Goodfella Smiles Orange Empire are both rather dark thanks to the other scent notes. Can't say I'm overly fond of either, so I'm a bit hesitant about trying other orange scented soaps. Anyone know of a lighter, sweeter orange scent? Would either of the two you discussed today fall into this category? Well, the two discussed was in the previous Monday morning mailbag. That was uh, Nordost by Barrister and Mann, and from uh, Ariana and Evans, L'Orange Verte, 
And Mark Bagwell did a comparison review of both of those in the previous Monday Morning Mailbag. Thanks again, Mark. Really do appreciate it. Um, all I can say is uh, Nordost is a really nice orange scent. Now, they say smoked orange. I don't get that. Uh, I don't think that means it's a dark kind of orange scent. It, it's not, it's, 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 a, it's a good orange scent. I don't know where the smoke comes from because I'm not really picking up a smokiness to it uh, per se. I think it's a very good orange scent. But if you're looking for something sweet, I can't recommend anything orangey and sweet off the top of my head. But I will tell you that Ariana and Evan's Limoncello is a wonderful, sweet, sweet lemon citrus kind of scent. Really, really terrific. Yeah, I, I like this one a lot. And it's a shaving cream. It's like an old-fashioned vintage shave cream. And it's terrific, and it makes heaps and heaps of lather. This one is fantastic. I've used it. i got to get a review done on it because it is absolutely wonderful. But, um, yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's my recommendation for something sweet in the citrus area is uh, limoncello. Give this one a try. It is marvelous. Really, really like it a lot. And, of course, Nordost, uh, smoked orange, it's a nice orange scent. I don't get the... The smokiness there. I don't. I don't know why it's. I'm not sure why it's called smoked orange, but it is a. But it's a terrific, terrific orange scent. Now I have a review done on this. I just have to edit it and get it posted. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Love them both. They're very, very good. So uh, Keith, I hope that helps. Uh, Charles Price said, "I work a 10 minute." walk from Pasteur's and I already have picked up a few tubs. Leon is a great guy to deal with and always there to help. Uh, this was in regards to uh, Abine Samant uh, mentioning that uh, Central Texas soaps were uh, discontinued and Pasteur Pharmacy has some in stock. So if you're a fan of Central Texas soaps, Get over to Pasteur's Pharmacy because Amine said, you know what? We went there. My daughter loves it. We happened to be there and they had it in stock there. You know, what remaining stock they have. And uh, they bought five tubs. She bought five tubs for herself. And I passed that on to Charles and said, hey, you know what? Get, get over there. And he's right around the corner and he's already picked up a few tubs. So I'm happy to hear that, Charles. And again, folks, if you were a fan of Central Texas Soaps, uh, it's there at Pasteur Pharmacy. Check them out online, or if you live in the New York City area, walk in and see if they have any remaining stock left. So thanks again, Charles, and thanks again to Abedin Saman for the heads up on that. Really, really do appreciate it. Uh, Beth Jones wrote, Oh, by the way, Mark, I have two of the Timeless Razor Shave Bowls, and they are excellent. These bowls produce an abundance of lather in very quick fashion. Yeah, I uh, I love this. The, I forgot to mention, they come in, in uh, about, I think, four different colors, something like that. But I have the blue one, and it is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful shave bowl. It builds up a beautiful, beautiful lather. These raised uh, ridges in here, this little bit of a spiral uh, ridge, that you uh, see here uh, does a wonderful job in building a lather. And the channels cut on the side of the uh, the bowl really give you a nice, nice grip. And uh, you know what? We'll find out later from Jimmy V regarding this. And he travels with this. And uh, so I want to mention that also. Jimmy V uh, talks about this, and he likes this one a lot too. So, Beth, thanks very, very much for confirming how wonderful the timeless uh, shave bowl, the lathering bowl is. It really is a terrific, terrific uh, piece of wet shaving gear. And it's, you know, made of high impact plastic. So it's not going to break if you drop it. That's the other really, really nice thing. And it looks like it'll travel well. I mean, I've, I've, there's, I've heard from wet shavers who say they do travel with this. So there you go. Uh, Jay Hipple wrote, the timeless bowl, here you go, <laughs> right here. The timeless bowl is the only one I use now. I wish they make it with slightly lower sides. Uh, Curdle Conch Lime is my all-time favorite soap. I only have one puck left of the good stuff. I think I need to try some of the other uh, like soaps. Uh, yeah, Colonel Conch, we're thinking maybe the glycerin soaps are gone. Uh, so if you have any left over, you know what? Uh, they're going to be like gold pretty soon. If that's the case, I'm not entirely sure. If you know more about 
Colonel Kong discontinuing their glycerin line of shave soaps? Let us know in the comments below. And Jay Hippo, I'm so glad you have a timeless lather shave bowl. Timeless razor shave bowl. It really is terrific. Uh, lower sides? Uh, you know what? Maybe. Maybe. That's a very, very good suggestion. Hopefully Doug, Matt, and uh, Doug, Matt. Let's see. It's Doug, uh, Jeremiah, Doug, Matt, Mark, and Nick over at Timeless Razor. Hopefully they're watching. And we'll take that into consideration. Maybe making a second version of this with a little bit of a lower wall. Uh, that's not a bad idea at all. But I, I really like this one uh, the way it is. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, Jim G said, hey, Mark, regarding the Williams mug soap, I purchased over 75 of them when I heard they were being discontinued. They are now being sold for over $20 a puck. I have many of the vintage as well. The vintage soap lathers wonderfully due to its original formula. The new formula's lather will dissipate, but it is still very slick. Whenever you come across it, snag it up quickly. Glad to see you have some. Thanks, Jim from Northfield. Wow, Jim, <laughs> that's some really quick forward thinking there on your part. 20 bucks a puck. Uh, this is coming about, this discussion came about because I was at the Maggard meetup and at the PIF table, there was like a half dozen uh, pucks of Williams Mug Shave Soap right on the table, brand new pucks, and nobody was touching them. And I was encouraging uh, my fellow wet shaver to grab one of them because they're no longer being made and you might as well experience it because otherwise it's going to cost you a lot of money. And here, Jim is confirming that, yeah, $20 a puck now, I'm assuming on eBay and probably Etsy, those kinds of online uh, retailers uh, and outlets. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, if you were to grab three of those pucks, at 60 bucks right there uh, in Williams Mug Shave Soap due to the inflated prices online, you could have gotten them for free. And, uh, you know, I was just, you know, I took a step back. I wanted other folks to experience Williams Mug Shave Soap. I didn't take them uh, because, you know, hey, you know, folks, you know, give them a try. It's right there. I have some. I've got a vintage puck as well. So, you know, give these a try. So, uh, you know, I hope someone did grab them because I believe in the Maggard information. They said that uh, if you visit the PIF table, uh, you know, grab something because anything that's left after the show is going to be thrown away. So I hope that wasn't thrown away. I hope someone had the presence of mind to, uh, to grab those. Viewer Bob LaRoe wrote, As for marks on one's face, I see a dermatologist every six months. The older you get, the more important this is. Even a once-a-year visit is a good idea. This is in regards to the irritation I had on my face in a previous Monday morning mailbag. I don't know where I got it. I don't know what caused it. It was gone by the next day. And uh, I haven't seen it since. So <laughs> I, I don't know what it was. I think it was just a fluke thing. But uh, Bob, thanks very much for the recommendation. I think uh, seeing a dermatologist at least once a year is a very, very good idea. So thanks for passing that along to all the viewers out there. He continues here. I assume you got a sample from Katie's Bubbles. I'm interested to hear your opinion. I think they're one of the best and definitely the most pronounced scent. I tried the new Colonel Conk soap and wasn't impressed. Well, Bob, thanks for your thoughts regarding the Colonel Conk soap, their new soap, and uh, thanks for sharing your experience with it. Uh, I think that's kind of where this is going with Colonel Conk's new soap formula. I'm not entirely sure. Haven't really read anything overly positive or overwhelmingly positive yet. Well, we'll see. Time will tell. But uh, again, folks, if you know anything about their glycerin soap, whether it's being discontinued or being remarketed or rebranded or whatever it is, please let us know in the comments below. And yes, Bob, I did get a sample from Katie's Bubble. Uh, I talked to the artisan and uh, here it is right here. This uh, was made especially for, specifically for the Maggard meetup. It is a very nice scent. Yeah, and it, it is a very pronounced scent. You're right. And this one is a very fresh, organic, earthy, yet really, really fresh and lively kind of scent. So it's really, really nice. This is not going to be for sale, uh, from what the artisan was telling me. This is not going to be for sale. This was specifically made for the Maggard uh, meetup uh, from uh, Katie's Bubbles. 
So, uh, you know, this was great, and I had a chance to talk to the artisan from Katie's Bubbles, and a uh, very, very nice guy, and uh, we had a nice discussion, and I was glad to get at least one sample. And again, it's a really, really terrific, terrific scent. And you are, you are correct, Bob. It is very, very pronounced. So, yeah, I am looking forward to trying this because I've heard a lot of great things about Katie's Bubbles from a lot of viewers out there. So really, really interested in, in, in building a lather with this and having a shave with it. Yeah, so, yeah, I did get some. Uh, so thanks very much for those comments, Bob. Really do appreciate it. A uh, viewer, 10 fluid ounces, 30 minutes wrote, not as actual irritation, but I have had a few times some redness develop on a couple spots on my face during a shave and lasting several minutes after the shave, and this redness was not uncomfortable. These rednesses were from about two or three years ago and might have been dependent on the soap I used. But even then, the soap was working effectively as shave soap and not otherwise irritating in any discomfort. Uh, you know what? That's kind of what my experience was. There was no discomfort. Uh, there was no itching, no burning, nothing like that. It was just a little red. So I don't know. I guess my experience and yours experience was probably the same. And thank you for passing that along. 10 fluid ounces, 30 minutes. Folks, have you ever had any kind of redness as he describes right here? Uh, really would be interested in knowing uh, and, and how you solved it. So please leave a comment below and let us know. I uh, really would be interested in, in hearing your thoughts on that. Uh, viewer Greg P. checked in and he said, the best part of waking up on Monday morning. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, think for my shave today, I'm going to use Old Spice Classic Cream from India. It's very good. And some cold spices to finish. Yeah, you know what? Uh, Abhine Saman sent us some Old Spice Aftershave Splash from India. Thank you very, very much for that. You know what? I'm going to go get it. Hang on one back. <laughs> I'm going to go grab some. Hang on one uh, back. But yeah, this is the Old Spice that Abhine very, very kindly sent along to the channel. And this is terrific. The scent of this is absolutely marvelous. This definitely is a throwback to what I remember when I was a kid uh, when my father and my older brother used Old Spice. This is absolutely fantastic. And the great thing is it comes in a glass bottle. Can you hear that? Yeah, glass bottle. Because we talked about um, some of these aftershaves that come from overseas, uh, like the uh, Brute, European version of Brute that Mark Bagwell sent along. And again, this is... Uh, Glass bottle. Well, here, I'll just like this. Glass bottles. And uh, that's fantastic. And the, the, the glass bottle seems to just give a better quality to the scent. But yeah, uh, this Old Spice from India is fantastic. Folks, uh, I'll get the link uh, where the seller was. Abhine uh, passed that along. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll repost it again because this is really, really terrific, terrific stuff. And yeah, if you have cold spices from Phoenix Shaving, this, this will go along. This will pair up very, very nicely. Absolutely fantastic. So, uh, Greg, thanks for that reminder. Really do appreciate it. Jimmy V Photography. We mentioned him uh, a little earlier in the refill segment. Well, here he is. Hi, Mark. Love the timeless video. Thank you very much, Jimmy. I love that. I love the timeless razors. I really do. They are fantastic, fantastic razors. And he's speaking in regards to the TI Slim, the titanium slim razor. This is wonderful. I used it before cameras rolled. We'll talk a little bit more about this later on in the show. But uh, Jimmy wrote, uh, hi, Mark. Love the timeless video. That timeless bowl right here again was my first bowl and I still travel with it. It's indestructible and a tub of soap fits right in it. Yes, uh, that's what he wanted to show us is that you can get a tub of soap like this. It'll fit right in there very, very nicely like that. And you can put that in your dop kit and you're ready to go. And uh, here's the limoncello right here. That fits in there very, very nicely, as does, uh, hey, here's one we just uh, we just talked about. We'll talk about it again. We uh, The review ran this past Friday. Uh, Old Timer from the Shave Dad uh, Facebook group and Jerry Plesha right there. That one, yeah, that one fits in there rather nicely. So, yeah, absolutely fantastic for travel. Great for home. The uh, Timeless Shave Bowl from Timeless Razors. 
Uh, time was Razor. Uh, really, really terrific. We'll have a link to their website where you can check out this bowl. Their, uh, their adjustable uh, shave brush handle, their razors, they are really, really knocking it out of the park with some great, great high quality top end shaving gear. Really, really terrific, terrific stuff. So again, we will have a link to Timeless Razor so you can check out all their shave gear. Thanks, Jimmy, for uh, mentioning the uh, the lathering bowl, the shave bowl, the timeless bowl. Yeah, it is it is really, really terrific, and it's a favorite. It's quickly becoming a favorite in my shave den as well. And my thanks to the uh, to the guys over there at Timeless Razor for passing this along and allowing me to share it on the channel. Really, really do appreciate it. And that wraps up another refill segment for this week. Thanks to everyone who contributed. Really, really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's check out some new wet shaving gear. Well, to kick off this morning's new wet shave gear segment, I want to revisit a razor that we talked about in a previous Monday morning mailbag and also one that we just recently reviewed on the channel to clarify a couple of things, and that is the Timeless Razor TI Slim Titanium Razor. This is an absolutely marvelous, marvelous razor. I love using this razor. It's absolutely fantastic. I wanted to point out a couple of things though. Well, first of all, it has this beautiful slim uh, profile to the razor head. This really, really does get into those tight areas, say underneath the nostrils or by the earlobes, where you want that little extra reach, so to speak, to get those little bits of hair. Boy, this does an absolutely marvelous, marvelous job with it. Now, the weight of this razor is similar to that of a vintage Gillette Slim adjustable razor. Uh, that's kind of uh, my, uh, my watermark to compare the weight of this, to kind of give you an idea of what it weighs. So I have my, my little handy-dandy uh, electric uh, scale right here, and uh, in turning it on, I am set to uh, grams. And this razor, this TI Slim, weighs in at about 69.4 grams on my scale. A Gillette Slim Adjustable is about 70.5 grams or thereabouts. And I believe that um, 69.4 grams translates to 2.45 ounces for this uh, TI Slim. So that gives you an idea of what the weight is. So if you have a Gillette Slim, then you'll understand what the weight of this razor is. Very maneuverable, very nimble, not too heavy, not too light. Really an ideal weight for a lot of wet shavers out there. I enjoy using uh, uh, this razor uh, with this weight. It really is terrific. Now, the, the thing I wanted to mention is, and they, and they mentioned this on the product page, is the, uh, the, the angle of approach with this razor. Most of the razors that they sell up there and most of the razors that I've reviewed on the channel are 30 degrees. 30 degrees, a light touch, let the razor do all the work, gentlemen, right? Very familiar, right? Well, this is, uh, this gives you a nice smooth shave at 30 degrees. However, if you vary it a little bit and you go a little shallower and you find that sweet spot, wow, does this razor get smooth. It gets incredibly smooth. I used this before cameras rolled, and I have been using this for several shaves this week. And I have been, uh, I have become aware of varying the angle with this razor. And the shave I had before cameras rolled was two pass BBS, no kidding. Absolutely fantastic. The, the shave was so great, I did a third pass just to do a third pass because I was enjoying it so much. But I have learned to vary that angle a little bit. And the point is this. If you do get this razor, it's going to take you a few shaves to, to learn and find that sweet spot. Just hang in there. You're going to get a good shave at 30 degrees. But when you learn to vary it a little bit and learn to you know, go a little shallower, I don't know how much, but you'll find that sweet spot you'll find that sweet spot where it really, really smooths out. You're going to get an incredible shave. Now, I used an A-Best razor blade with it this morning. It was just a fantastic, fantastic shave. Really smooth, close, efficient. And I've seen this comment before online, so it's not an original thought here, but it's one that I agree with. 
This, not once did I think this razor was going to bite me. I mean, I was not afraid of this razor at all. Uh, sometimes uh, you, when you use a razor, you're thinking, oh, okay, I'm going to have to be a little easier with this because it might nick me. Uh, it might bite a little bit. Uh, I, I never, I, I don't get that with this. It's just a really smooth, comfortable uh, shave. Uh, it really is terrific. And it's a 0.5 millimeter blade gap. And on their page, they describe that as being aggressive. I find it to be highly efficient, but not aggressive in the sense of, in the sense of an R41. R41 is really aggressive. Uh, but I find it to be highly efficient. Very, very smooth. I think what might be a play here is that because it's so smooth and so comfortable, you might get a little more feedback from the Allen block uh, the first couple of shaves out because you don't realize, you know, how efficient it is, that sort of thing. Uh, but I, I've, I've really enjoyed the shave with the, uh, the TI Slim. It really is a terrific, terrific razor. If you get one, just know it's going to take a few shaves to kind of modify your muscle memory and find that sweet spot. It'll be okay at 30 degrees, but when you vary off of that 30 degree angle, boy, it gets really, really smooth, really, really efficient, a terrific, terrific razor. So just know that uh, it'll take maybe two, three shaves to you know really find that sweet spot. And it really is a remarkable, remarkable razor. The TI Slim, from Timeless Razor, my thanks again to Jeremiah, Doug, Mark, Matt, and Nick, and everyone at Timeless Razor for passing this one along to the channel, allowing me to share it with all the viewers. The Timeless, T, Timeless Razor, TI Slim, Grade 5 Titanium, uh, terrific, terrific razor. I'll link to the page where you can read all about it, and they talk about that uh, slight variation in the angle of approach, that sort of thing. I just wanted to make you aware that in working with this razor, I did vary it up a little bit. I found that sweet spot, and man, this razor sings. So uh, the TI Slim from the folks at Timeless Razor. <laughs> Want to share with you another Timeless Razor that they very, very kindly sent along to the channel. Here it is, the Timeless Stainless Steel Open Comb Razor. How about that? Absolutely beautiful. Now, you can get a uh, base plate with a 0.6, an open comb base plate with a 0.68 millimeter blade gap or a 0.95 millimeter blade gap. This is the 0.68 millimeter blade gap. And of course, this is the smooth cap and it has the barber pole handle. So when you go up to the page, you can customize the razor however you want. This particular razor with the smooth cap, it's everything, it's polished stainless steel, smooth cap. Uh, the open comb with a 0.68 blade gap and the barber pole handle is absolutely wonderful. This delivered a wonderful, wonderful shave. I got to get a review done on this. I want to share this with you. It is such a smooth, efficient shave. This one will uh, shave at the 30 degree angle, uh, no problem. Uh, but it is heavier than the titanium uh, razor. It has a little more heft. Now I've got my handy dandy scale over here and I'm just going to set that on there. It's 4.54 ounces. Now that translates to I think about 126.2 grams. Uh, let me just click over to that. Uh, I'm showing about 128.5 grams is what I'm showing. If my razor, if my razor, if my scale is working correctly, but an absolutely spectacular, spectacular razor. And again, you can go up to the page and customize it however you want to. Uh, so if you want something with a little more growl, you can get an open comb base plate at 0.95 millimeters. Uh, and if you want something that's a little, a little more tame, uh, 0.68 millimeter blade gap. And this 0.68 millimeter uh, blade gap was very, very smooth. This is probably one of the smoothest open comb razors I've ever used. Absolutely beautiful because I was thinking that even with a 0.68 millimeter blade gap, and I've used razors with that blade gap, uh, I was thinking that this was going to probably, you know, I really had to watch myself. Boy, the, ra the, the, the shave with this razor was so smooth and so comfortable and so close. Really, really terrific. Uh, it is a very, very comfortable, 
two pass shave for me with one day's worth of beard growth, day, day and a half. It's probably going to be a three pass shave with two days worth of beard growth or more. Again, very smooth, very comfortable, very, very close. I've only had one shave with it, so that's kind of my initial impression, but I am going to do a review on this and get it posted very, very soon because I really enjoyed the shave with this, and I really, really love the heft of this. Let me just open it up for you real quick. Of course, it did come with a, uh, a buffer ring there, and we're going to use that. And here is the, the, uh, the base plate here. And you can see, again, as I pointed out in my review on the titanium razor, it's got these lather channels right there in the base plate, and then it has that center channel right there in the middle of the base plate where the tabs from the cap fit in. It's a really neat, neat design. So those tabs just fit right into that center channel there, and everything aligns up very, very nicely. Really, really terrific. The end tabs of the razor blade... You can barely feel them, but for practical purposes, they are enclosed. They're not going to get in the way. Also makes the razor head a little more maneuverable and nimble by not being overly wide. So I really, really, really enjoyed the shave with this. We're going to get a review done on it and uh, get it posted here very, very soon. Uh, stainless steel material, beautifully polished. You can get it in polished or matte, straight bar or open comb. Uh, with the open comb, 0.6 millimeter uh, blade gap or 0.95 millimeter blade gap. Uh, I'll link to the page where you can see the stainless steel razor. Uh, the barber pole handle is absolutely fantastic. Beautiful, beautiful weight. Uh, wonderful balance. Uh, alignment and balance of the blade, absolutely spot on. Just a terrific, terrific razor. So I will link to the page where you can see their stainless steel razor. And you can customize it to the heart's content, your heart's content. And also, don't forget the razor stand here. Absolutely beautifully polished stainless steel. And of course, they have it etched in the bottom there. Timeless razors. How about that, huh? Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely gorgeous. Timeless razor. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And here, I'll give you a look like that. Yeah, how about that? Isn't that great? absolutely great. Yeah, probably the smoothest open comb razor I've ever used. Really, this is really, really terrific. Really, really enjoyed the shave. Looking forward to more shaves and to doing the review. So that's the Timeless Razor Stainless Steel Open Comb uh, Razor. Uh, and I will link to the page and you can see all the customization options that are available. Uh, so my thanks again to uh, uh, Jeremiah, Doug, Matt, Mark, and Nick over at Timeless Razors for passing this along to the channel and allowing me to share it with all the viewers. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Well, Mantic 59 of the Sharpologist has dropped into the channel a couple of times to tell us about new TSA regulations regarding taking a safety razor in a carry-on bag. The bottom line is you're not allowed to take a safety razor in a carry-on bag. The TSA agents will confiscate that safety razor. You can take your safety razor in checked luggage. That's fine. But you are no longer allowed to take a safety razor in your carry-on bag. Just so you know. So do, so do not take a safety razor in your carry-on bag. TSA will, will confiscate it. So if, if all you're taking is a carry-on bag, what do you do? Well, I happen to have something here that could help you. Uh, this is new from the folks at Brio. This is the Raise Head Shaver. They are just launching this. It's an electric head shaver. Let me show it to you. They pass it along to the channel so that I can share it with everyone. I've done a review on this, and it will air soon. Here it is right here. They give you an information book on how it works. And here it is. It is a rotary head shaver. Okay, it comes with the charging cable right here. Okay, and you can plug that into your laptop or you can plug it into an adapter, a wall adapter that accommodates a USB plug, that sort of thing. And here it is. You have five rotary heads that conform to the contours of your head. They flex and uh, will will conform to the contours of your head. Uh, titanium plated. We've, <laughs> we've talked about some titanium razors today. Well, these blades are titanium plated. And uh, you have two speeds, S1 and S2. Let me show you S1. It'll light up S1. 
And then uh, it shows that there's 89 minutes of shave time left. Yes, I've been using it. And then if you hit it one more time, S2, speed two. So let me show you, let me, let me do that again for all the folks who are listening to the podcast. Here's speed one. And here's speed two. So it works really, really well. Uh, that second speed will kick in. You can kick in that second speed if you have some extra long hair. You've maybe uh, let yourself go for an extra day or two. From, you know, you skipped shaving your head, that sort of thing. That comes in really, really handy. And it can be used wet or dry. You can rinse this under the tap. You can use your favorite shaving cream. And, uh, you know, put a light lather on there. Again, I have found that a lighter, thinner coating of lather works better for electric head shavers. But five rotary heads, wet or dry, rinse it under the tap to clean it up, two speeds. It also has a travel lock, which is really, really neat. You hold the button on the side. It counts up, one, two, three, and then it locks. Watch, I'll show you. Okay, so I'm holding the button, one, two, three, and now it's locked. So no matter how I press this button, can you hear that? It's not going. It's it's not going to. It's not going to turn on. That's great for travel. I mean, you put this in your dop kit and your carry on. Uh, it gets jostled around. It's not going to start up and drain the battery. Uh, so that's a really really nice nice feature. Now to turn the travel lock off, all you have to do is hold the button down again, and it will count down three, two, one, and unlock. So here's we'll, we'll show you that holding the button three, two, one. And there it is. It started right up. Okay, and then that's speed one, speed two, and then off. So a really, really nice uh, higher-end uh, head shaver. Uh, you can also use it for face shaves if you want. Uh, they, just, they, they show that in a photo on their webpage, although for me, it's a, uh, it's a head shaver. However, if I have to fly out of town and I only have my carry-on bag, this is what I'm going to take for face shaving and head shaving right here. This will this will accommodate me both ways, and I can also take a small little tub of uh, maybe shaving soap and a little brush perhaps, or maybe some cremo and a small travel tube or um, you know something along those lines and uh, you know get a nice wet or dry head shave. Again, you get 100 minutes on a, on a charge, so uh, good for about 20 shaves is what they estimated on a charge. So that really is terrific and uh, really, really nice. Rinse is clean, use it wet or dry. The Brio Rays Head Shaver, this just launched, will have links to it so you can check it out and it really does have some nice, nice features. And the one thing I like about it is that the, the ergonomic design of it, it fits so nicely in the hand. It's very, very comfortable. And it gets the job done. And yeah, and the other day, I did use it for a head shave and it did a wonderful job. I wanted to make sure I used it before introducing it to you on the Monday morning mailbag. So I have it fresh in my memory as to how smooth and close it was. It was very, very good. And the five rotary heads do conform to the contours of, of your head. And it does a nice job. And as they point out, the really nice thing about it is you don't need a mirror. You can just start this up and start shaving and get your head shaved and you can walk around the house and talk on the phone or whatever else you want to do and, and, and get a head shave. So you don't really have to be locked in front of a mirror. And it's great in the pinch if you have to get out the door uh, quickly. This is really, really good. And again, emphasizing here, perfect for travel, perfect for a carry-on. If you're flying away for the weekend, the only thing you're going to take is a carry-on because you can, no, you can no longer take a safety razor. So that, again, that's the Brio Raise Head Shaver, just launched. I'll look for the review sometime this week. Well, last Friday, we did a review of a brand new shave soap and aftershave. This is from the Shave Dad Facebook group, which is run by viewer Jerry Plesha. And here it is here, Old Timer. This is absolutely fantastic. Uh, Andy Amaya at the Wet Shaving Store very, very kindly sent this along. This is a collaboration between the Shave Dad Facebook group, uh, Jerry Plesha, Andy Amaya at the Wet Shaving Store, and Elysian Artisan Shave Soap Maker. Uh, absolutely fantastic, fantastic soap base. 
wonderful, wonderful scent. This is inspired by Aqua Velva. Absolutely fantastic. And again, I, I did a review on this this past Friday, and it is, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It really is wonderful. It doesn't have that harsh, hard edge that Aqua Velva has. It has a nicer, softer, more refined edge to it. Uh, the scent doesn't hit you over the head, and um, it really does grow over time and uh, throughout the use of it. It really is very, very nice. And this soap base really made a terrific, terrific lather. So this is definitely a really, really terrific, terrific shave soap and aftershave splash. I really, really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the scent a great deal because, again, it's more refined, it's more sophisticated, it's softer than Aqua Velva. If you're an Aqua Velva fan and you're not really a, too much of a fan of that harder edge, you're going to like this a lot. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. So I just wanted to mention it again. Uh, old timer from Shave Dad, the wet shaving store in Elysian Artisan Shave Soaps. Really, really terrific. Uh, again, it's available at uh, the wet shaving store. Just get up to wetshaving.store. You'll see it up there, both the uh, shave soap and the aftershave splash. Again, my thanks to Jerry Plesha, Andy Amaya, and Elysian Artisan Shave Soaps for passing this along and allowing me to share it with all the viewers. Thank you very, very much. Well, speaking of the wet shaving store, Andy Amaya very, very kindly sent along something that is going to launch probably end of June, beginning of July, and he allowed me to give you a sneak peek of it. Here it is right here from Hags, a, uh, an artisan soap maker out of Greece. Here it is, Dark Night. How about that? Yeah, absolutely marvelous, marvelous scent. And of course, the aftershave splash. Again, uh, from what I hear, probably end of June, beginning of July. Now, you can go up to the wet shaving store and do a search for Dark Knight, and the product page will come up. Let me share with you a little bit of what they say about it. Uh, experience the epitome of sophistication with Dark Knight shaving soap and aftershave splash. A remarkable creation by Hags, a revered soap artisan from Greece. Now, Hags stands for have a great shave. <laughs> very, very clever. I like that. Inspired by the captivating fragrance of Percival by Parfums de Marly, this exceptional set takes your shaving routine to new heights of luxury and elegance. Crafted with meticulous care and expertise, Dark Knight features Hags' new Hathor base, a testament to their commitment to excellence. The soap effortlessly produces a rich, creamy lather that provides exceptional cushioning and glide, ensuring a smooth and comfortable shave. Paired with the invigorating aftershave splash, this set leaves your skin feeling refreshed and revitalized, enveloped in the captivating scent of Percival. Yeah, a uh, really, really terrific, terrific scent. Let me just get another sample of it here. Yeah, that is really, really nice. Perfect for an evening out. Absolutely wonderful. And uh, you, you can go up there and you can check out the scent notes. Top notes of lavender, mandarin, orange, bergamot, and geranium. Middle notes of uh, hedion, violet, coriander, jasmine, and cinnamon. Base notes of abroxin. I've never heard of that one. That's a new one on me. Abroxin, amberwood, balsam fir, musk, and clearwood. Uh, and they talk about the Hathor base. It uses donkey milk, and donkey milk has a lot of great qualities. It's rich in vitamins and minerals. It has deep hydration. It is soothing. It has omega-3 and omega-9 fatty acids in it. So it, uh, it really is a great, great soap. Uh, and it really, it's, it's touching all the bases is what I'm saying. So uh, we'll have a link to it. Uh, again, probably going to launch end of June, beginning of July, somewhere in there. Want to give you a quick heads up on Dark Night, a collaboration between Hags and the Wet Shaving Store. Again, available end of June, beginning of July. We'll have a link to the page. We're going to get a review done about the time that it launches. So my thanks to Andy and Maya out there for passing this along and allowing me to share with all the viewers. Dark Night from Hags and the Wet Shaving Store. Viewer Mark Bagwell checked in with a review of Ariana and Evans' Peach and Cognac. 
And he writes, Now I must admit I was slow to pull the trigger on this one. The scent profile of peach and cognac doesn't exactly go together like peanut butter and jelly. But knowing and appreciating Peter Charkalis and his wizardry with perfumes, I decided to bite the bullet, or in this case, a peach, and order it. However, I remained skeptical. I remained so until I popped the top off the container, and wow, the scent that rose from the container was absolutely intoxicating. This has become one of my favorite scents. And yes, peach and cognac does go together like peanut butter and jelly. Let's talk about performance. Like all K2E soaps from Ariana and Evans, the performance is second to none. It lathers quickly into a slick, cushiony lather with the most incredible scent that remains throughout the shave. The post-shave is outstanding. A&E is considered one of the best soap companies for a reason. It has an incredible scent, outstanding performance, and a fantastic post-shave. In other words, it has everything and is offered in a shave soap, aftershave splash, which is more of a skin food, an EDP, and a candle that I'm about to order. So trust me in this. It's time to pick the peach. Wow. Hey, Mark, thanks very, very much for a great, great review of Ariana and Evan's Peach and Cognac. Hey, folks, we'll have a link to it where you can check it out yourself. Thanks again, Mark. Really do appreciate it. Mark Bagwell checked in one more time with a review of his Simpson Polo 10 shave brush. And he writes, a review of my Simpson Polo 10 in Rusty Joe material with the Sovereign Fiber Knot. This is one of my absolute favorites. A Polo 10 is tall and hefty, making it a perfect brush for bowl lathering and head shaves. The design is extremely comfortable to hold and offers a positive grip, even when covered in soap. And the bottom lip makes hanging the brush a snap. This fits beautifully in my Phoenix Shaving 4 brush stand. There are so many reasons to fall in love with the Polo 10. The design, the exceptional craftsmanship, an absolutely wonderful synthetic knot, and last but not least, it looks so darn good. Here are the specs of the Polo 10. The overall brush height is 122 millimeters. The handle height is 68 millimeters. The knot loft is 54 millimeters. The knot diameter is 27 millimeters. The weight is 124 grams. Wow, Mark, an absolutely outstanding and beautiful shaving brush. Thanks so much for sharing with all the viewers. Folks, check out the shaving brushes at Simpsons. They make some really, really special shave brushes as witnessed by the Polo 10 uh, that Mark Bagwell reviewed and shared with all of us today. Mark, thanks again very, very much. Viewer Robert Ross checked in with his own comparison review between two shave soaps, and he wrote, Hi, Mark. After much research on shave soaps, I bought a tub of Lothar Calm V2 Base and Bear Stern Man Le Grand Chypre. Now that's spelled C-H-Y-P-R-E for the folks listening to the podcast. It's pronounced Chypre. Uh, that's my understanding. And Lothar is spelled L-O-T-H-U-R. I believe it's pronounced Lothar. So Lothar and Le Grand Chypre. Uh, and Le Grand Chypre from Bear Stern Man is in the Omnibus base. I am extremely impressed with both soap bases, but wanted to compare and contrast both. Both soaps reviewed are the latest bases for each artisan. To make the comparison fair, I've used each soap for a minimum of 25 shaves, with each shave being three passes. I measured out exactly a 16th teaspoon of soap and added a half tablespoon of water and made a slurry. I used a slightly damp synthetic brush to whip the slurry into a lather for both soaps. Here are his uh, categories and points uh, in comparing and contrasting these soaps. Here's the first topic, ease of lathering. Both soaps are extremely easy to lather. Because both soap bases are considered elite, this is an important criterion for overall performance. Although it was a close call, I would say the winner in this category by just a whisker, pun intended, is Lothar Grooming. 
Next category is sheen. Both soaps, once they are whipped up from a slurry, have excellent sheen, so I would say it's a tie. No clear winner. The next topic is density. If you're looking for a dense lather, look no further than Barrister and Man. It is the hands-down winner in this category. Uh, the next topic he covers is slickness. I use Cremo as a pre-shave, which is inherently slick. When I paint on both B&M and Lothar, both soaps are slick, since that is what is expected from an elite soap. If I had to choose a winner in this category, I would give a slight edge, no, <laughs> no pun intended, to Lothar Grooming. Uh, the next category or topic he covers here is face feel. Barrister and Man, as mentioned, is very dense and sticks to the face, unlike any other soap I have ever used. When you paint it on, the lather stays in place. Lothar, on the other hand, has less density than Barrister and Man, yet it feels absolutely amazing on your face. I'm not sure why that is, but perhaps the addition of dimethicone may play a role in that. It's an ingredient that is used in most high-end moisturizers. I prefer the lighter feel of Lothar on my face. His next category or topic of comparison is ability to take water. Both soaps are extremely thirsty and can take a lot of water. I would say it's a draw in this category. The next category is scent. I am not comparing scents that are in the same genre. I can still comment on them nonetheless. Lothar, which has far fewer ingredients than Barrister and Man, has a very clean, crisp scent. Barrister and Man, on the other hand, has a very complex scent. Because scent profiles are so personal, it's hard to judge. I think I prefer the Barrister and Man scent, but your mileage may vary. Uh, Poche Feel is the next category. This is where Lothar really shines. The Poche Feel of Lothar is like no other soap I have ever tried. It makes my face feel amazing. Barrister and Man has good post-shave characteristics, although I have noticed I have to apply more aftershave balm to my face after using Barrister and Man versus Lothar. I feel like Barrister and Man dries out my face slightly. The clear winner is Lothar. Uh, the next category is value. Lothar in Canada retails for $32 versus $27 for Barrister and Man. This is a significant difference percentage-wise. However, in my opinion, I will gladly pay more to buy Lothar. To me, it's worth the extra $5. Because I am extremely frugal when it comes to using shave soap, I can make a 4-ounce tub of soap easily last me over one year since I shave every second day. So the cost difference is meaningless to me. However, for someone on a tighter budget, B&M, Barrister and Man, is clearly less expensive. And he wraps up here with his overall thoughts. As mentioned, I am extremely happy with my purchase of both Barrister and Man and Lothar. However, if I had to choose just one, it would be Lothar. It is absolutely superb. I have sensitive skin, and the face feel and post-shave are second to none. If you haven't tried Lothar Grooming Shave Soap, I highly recommend that you do. It's available at the Razor Company in the USA and top of the chain in Canada. I have no vested interest in recommending either soap. My opinions are my own and may not align with your experience. Best regards, Bob Ross. Bob, thanks very much for a wonderfully informed and detailed review. I know viewers appreciate it. It will help them make an informed decision. Thanks again, Bob. Really do appreciate it. Well, when I was at the Maggard meetup, I met a gentleman named Adam Weehagen, and he is an artisan shave brush maker. And he donated one of his shaving brushes to the door prizes. And uh, there was another gentleman he was standing there with who won this shaving brush. And they were showing it to me. And it's absolutely spectacular. It was beautiful, beautiful shaving brush. 
And I asked Adam if he was pursuing this and making these. And he said, yes, he was going to be doing this. I said, well, when you do it, let me know. And I'll mention on the Monday morning mailbag. And he happened to write me and he sent me some photos. And he said, hello, Mark, this is Adam. We met at the Maggard meetup. I just wanted to inform you, tomorrow my first release will be shipped to Andy over at the wet shaving store. I've included some of the brushes in the drop. They are fitted with the G5C synthetic knot. So check out these photos. Absolutely beautiful selection of shaving brushes. Get on up to the uh, wet shaving store. I'm sure that they'll be available soon because this email came to me about a week ago. I think I mentioned it in Second Cup last Monday. So I am, sh I am almost certain, almost certain, best guess here is that these brushes most likely available at the wet shaving store right now. So check out these shaving brushes from Andy Weehagen. They're absolutely beautiful. And the name of the brand that he uses is Nameless Works Brush. Uh, Nameless Works, that's N-A-M-E-L-E-S-S. -S, and Works is spelled W-O-R-K-X. So again, a brush drop from Andy Weehagen uh, at Nameless Works. Check them out. They're available. At, they should be available at the Wet Shaving Store. Get over to wetshaving.store to check out shave brushes from Andy Weehagen at Nameless Works. Thanks again, Andy. Really, really do appreciate the update. Okay, so here are a few heads up before we get out of here. Uh, Rabbit Banana from Phoenix Shaving is coming back very, very soon. So keep an eye peeled for that. Uh, Rich Hansen over at uh, Rich Man Shaving Group on Facebook announced that he's collaborating with Hendrix Classics Shave Soap, Pete Hendricks, and they're going to be releasing a shave soap called Miami Nights very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. Mark Bagwell also mentioned to us that Razor Rock has introduced a game changer base plate with a 0.76 blade gap. Now, I have the 0.68 blade gap in the game changer, and uh, I think there's a 0.84 available. So this 0.76 Puts it right there in the middle. You can find this on Italian Barber. Uh, and as a point out up there, you are purchasing only the 0.76P base plate. You will only receive the base plate. Therefore, you need to already own a game changer top cap. All right. This is the new mid-range game changer with the 0.76P head, which was created to be in between the 0.68P head and the 0.84P Head. So just so you know. So there's a few updates to uh, wrap up new wet shaving gear. And that does wrap up new wet shaving gear. Thanks so much to everyone who contributed this week. Really, really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's check out some of these questions and comments. Viewer Jamie Horn sent in the following question, and he wrote, Hi, Mark. I'd like your opinion and the opinion of your viewers. Do you think that I should have my 1948 to 1950 Gillette Aristocrat replated or leave it as it is? The plating looks good, just some fading on the top of the doors. I just wondered what you would suggest. I really love this razor, too. I love all my razors. But my aristocrat and my 1965 Slim have that special vintage Gillette character. Uh, Jamie, great question. And I can give you uh, three different scenarios uh, that, uh, that I uh, followed with uh, three different razors that I have in my collection. Uh, first up, what is my uh, Gillette uh, Slim adjustable razor from uh, 1964? This is my J3. Uh, when I got it, the plating was fine and it worked fine. It just seemed that over time, whatever gunk that may have built up inside that handle moved down to the bottom knob and I found, found it almost impossible to open and close, to, to, to lock and unlock those doors in place with that quarter turn uh, that is required with the uh, Gillette Slim and the Gillette Fat Boy. So I opted to have it replated by 
Chris Evett at razorplate.com because Chris also uh, does a deep vibratory cleaning of the razor. So uh, this got a really nice deep vibratory cleaning and cleaned out all that gunk. He replated it in nickel and it looks absolutely beautiful. It looks brand new and mechanically it feels brand new. So this quarter turn is so beautiful and smooth. I can click through um, the adjustments and uh, it's absolutely beautiful, spot on. Everything is great. Blade alignment and balance is just wonderful. So yeah, that's one reason why I decided to replate this is because mechanically it wasn't performing as I'd like. And uh, there was a deep cleaning that came along with the replating. That's why I replayed it. Uh, the second scenario uh, is my Gillette Fat Boy. I believe I got this one from uh, Jim from Northfield. Thank you again very much, Jim. Now, the plating on this looks terrific. Uh, it is really in very, very, very good shape. Uh, however, it does have one characteristic that I find to be quite charming, and it's this. When I open up the butterfly doors, one of these doors is a little lazy. Can you see that? It doesn't open fully. I have to kind of give it a little touch there to open it up. Let me show you again. Okay, it'll it'll kind of it gets lazy there in closing too. Okay, so let me just turn and give it a quarter turn. The quarter turn works very very smoothly. So when I open it up again, I'll show you from the other side. When I open it up, that door there, okay, it opens together and that door just doesn't quite make it. So I have to kind of give it a little push to open it up fully. And I find that to be quite charming. And that's something that I would not want to correct because it makes it uniquely my razor. Uh, so as long as it shaves correctly and the blade balance and the alignment are fine and it, and it gives me a nice shave and I'm not nicking myself because uh, you know something might be off mechanically with the razor, then uh, I'm going to leave it alone. I love the vintage quality, as, as you mentioned, because the plating on this is very, very good. I don't see much wear there at all, and I like that lazy door. There are some wet shavers out there that probably would want to have that door corrected and make sure everything opens in unison and closes in unison. Uh, not me. I really, really like that little bit of a lazy door that really adds to the charm of this razor and the vintage quality of the Gillette Fat Boy. So it makes it uniquely mine. Uh, when I grab this razor and I open it up, uh, I know, hey, yeah, look at that lazy door. That's my Fat Boy. Yeah. So that, that's kind of that's kind of uh, uh, the way I look at it there. So that's the second scenario as to why I would not uh, replate. Uh, the vintage Gillette is because it has some kind of neat, quirky characteristics that uh, give it uh, an, indiv an individual spirit, uh, let's say, and it makes it uniquely mine. So I kind of like that. That's why I would leave this alone. Uh, it shaves well, nothing wrong with blade balance or alignment, just that lazy door. So if it's those little idiosyncras idiosyncratic is that the word, word I'm looking for? <laughs> Idiosyncrasies that make this razor a little more unique. I'm going to keep them in place. That's just the way I look at it. And uh, yeah, the plating looks fine. So yeah, that kind of falls in line with the vintage look uh, that uh, you mentioned. And the third scenario uh, applies to my late father's uh, Gillette Super Speed. Uh, it's in absolutely beautiful, beautiful shape. The plating is held up so well after 60 years and the doors operate so wonderfully well it delivers some great great shaves this is a razor i'm not going to touch at all not only does it maintain its vintage gillette quality look and feel but it's the same exact razor plating and all that my late father used i'm not going to change that it has that that additional sentimental quality there that that I do not want to erase. That's why I would uh, definitely not replate this razor. I want to use the razor in the same state that my father had last used it. So yeah, that's one reason why I would not replate it is because of that sentimental connection to a family member. 
So those are kind of my three scenarios for plating and not plating uh, a vintage Gillette razor. Uh, I'll put it to the viewers out there. What do you think Jamie should do? Uh, you know, uh, comment below. Let us know. Uh, it's a 1948 to 1950 Gillette Aristocrat. Uh, plating is kind of fine. Should he have it replated or should he, or should he leave it the way it is? Please comment below. Let us know. Uh, Jamie, looking forward to some, some great, great answers from the viewers out there. So uh, you and I together will check those comments. Thanks again for a great, uh, a really great question, Jamie. Really, really do appreciate it. Viewer Brent Page checked in again regarding straight razor shaving. Now, in a previous Monday morning mailbag, he sent along some tips and tricks in learning how to do the straight razor shave. And he did a follow-up uh, email uh, to clarify some points. And he wrote, uh, Hi, Mark. Great 3MB and second cup. Thanks for using my straight razor tips and tricks in questions and comments. I wanted to shed some clarity as I made a few typos in that email. I started learning to use a straight razor a few months ago, and now it's all I use. As I said, it's very fresh in mind. The learning curve is not what guys make it out to be. The real learning curve is getting over the fear of the blade, in my humble opinion. If you lose the fear and become confident, it's easier for your mind to hone in and focus on what you're doing and your technique. In questions and comments, you had talked about how Mr. Price and I differed on our views using an unloaded shavette to practice. I want to amend my statement slightly. Hopefully, this will shed a little more clarity. So, holding a shavette and making practice runs or dry runs would be an excellent way to build confidence and gain experience holding the razor. However, those dry runs don't really transfer anything to real straight razor shave. When you put that steel to your face, your grip, angle, and pressure all come into play to shave your beard. You just can't learn that or practice that with a shavette with no blade. The only way to do it is, well, to do it. The comment I made about setting yourself up to cut or nick yourself comes from when practicing with the shavette, you may become accustomed to holding it at a certain angle and pressure. That angle and pressure may not transfer to your actual blade. And when you try and apply that angle and pressure to your blade, you could nick yourself for sure, i.e. too much pressure, not enough angle, or too little pressure and too steep an angle, causing the blade to skip. That's why, in my opinion, the only way to do it is just do it live. If someone is especially worried about nicks and cuts, you'd be surprised how hard it is to cut yourself as long as that blade has zero lateral movement in your stroke and your angle is correct. I know this sounds odd. It's just something you won't understand until you actually do it. Hey, Brent, thanks very, very much for the clarification. And I kind of get it. I really do. Uh, let me see if I can kind of encapsulate it. The best way to produce muscle memory uh, is to actually use the straight razor uh, so that you're producing the correct muscle memory, the correct pressure, the correct angle with the blade. Is, I think that's kind of what you're saying, and I kind of get that. Whereas if you're using a shavette without a razor blade in it, uh, you may have the muscle memory movement, but the angle, the pressure, et cetera, isn't going to be the same, and you might develop that muscle memory, and when you transfer it over to a straight razor, it's not going to match up. I think that's what you're saying. At least that's what I'm kind of gleaning from your comments. And it's very, very valid. I absolutely uh, understand your point. Uh, however, I think it's great to see both sides of the equation, uh, to see uh, something from Charles Price's side and to see something from your side. That way, someone starting the wet shave, uh, the straight razor shave, uh, will be better informed to uh, make a decision, kind of figure out which path uh, works best for them. So thanks very much for that, Brent. Really, really do appreciate it. And folks, uh, again, I hope you found that to be very informative. Comment below. Let us know about uh, your particular take on a straight razor shave. If you're doing a straight razor shave, 
how did you develop your muscle memory? Really would be interested in uh, hearing your thoughts and, uh, and, and hearing your experiences as well. So thanks again, Brent. Really, really do appreciate it. And that wraps up another Monday Morning Mailbag. Thanks so much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below. Let me know. Check out all the wonderful artists and soap makers and sellers that you see displayed on the bottom of the screen right now. They make and offer some wonderful artists and shave soap. They also offer some wonderful wet shaving gear to enhance your traditional wet shave. The next time you're online, please take a moment Pay them a visit. I sure would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Also, check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash Mark Zerady, where you'll find all the Amazon listed products that I review in this channel, organized and categorized so you can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this laugh. Hey, we have another double take cartoon puzzle this week. Try to find the differences between the two cartoon panels. If you need more time, just pause the video or try to find all the differences before time runs out. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week.